Hello and welcome to Called Bing Sports. This is the post game for the Utah Jazz versus um, the Golden State Warriors. The Jazz ended up dropping this game in what ended up being a lot closer game than it could have been, at least from the beginning. Um, they lost by seven points in a final score of 123 to 116. And I think there's a lot to take from this game. I think there's a lot of positives. I think there are some negatives. But overall, I am happy with the Jazz. And I am happy with the Jazz for one thing specifically. And that is the third quarter. Um, the Jazz went into the half. They were down by 14 points. And were able to come out and absolutely demolish the Warriors um, in the third quarter. And the Warriors are one of the best. I, I think they are the best third quarter team in the NBA. So that means a lot for them to be able to go out there and to put up those points. And a decent amount of that was their three-point shooting um, coming a bit closer to average, even though that ended up not happening in the game as a whole. Um, they did get closer to the average, but overall had a poor shooting night from three. They were four of 21 in the first half, which is absolutely horrendous. Um, less than 20% there. Um, but at the end of the game, they ended up being 31.8%. So much better game, especially when you look at it from the perspective that they took 23 um, three-point shots in the second half, and they made 10 of those. So 10 of 20, you know, really good game. Now, when the Warriors made 17 of 32, that's just going to be a hard game to win. And so once you start kind of adding in some factors where the Jazz played last night, um, the Warriors did not. So the Warriors had a day of rest going into this game. Um, the Jazz shot poorly from three, but the Warriors are the best defense in the league. So I don't want to necessarily write all of that off as just the Jazz having a poor night. I think a decent amount of it is that the Warriors are a very good defensive team, but the Jazz also are a good defensive team. And while Steph Curry is the best three-point shooter in the history of the NBA, 17 of 32 is just insane. So I do think, you know, you drop them down to a more reasonable 14 of 32, which is still an incredible game. And all of a sudden the Jazz win by two. But then you do have to consider the fact that while the Jazz were missing Whiteside, um, the Warriors are still waiting on Clay Thompson to come back, which is going to be a big boon to them. They are um, still missing James Weissman. And I don't think he's really going to have a big role um, this season. I just think with his injury and the like, I, I think... That's not a big loss for them, but Draymond Green, I mean, he's one of your starters. He's out in health and safe with health and safety protocols. That's a big loss to them. And Damian Lee is consistently giving them 20 minutes. So he might not be the greatest player in the league, you know, um, but you still have to find someone to give you 20 good minutes of basketball. So the Warriors definitely shorthanded, I think more significantly than the Jazz who are missing white side, but then rest does play a role into how the Jazz played. And really, it just comes back to how I felt that the Jazz had a really good third quarter this game. Um, a game that, you know, at halftime, I was just disappointed and ready to have to do post game for a loss, which I, I still have to, but it was a very different type of loss than what I was expecting. I was expecting just an absolute annihilation of the Jazz where we as fans would really have to take a step back and think, what realistically are the jazz like are they a title contender and while this game shows that the jazz still have to go a long way um and thankfully you know there's 40 plus games for that it doesn't show it's not nearly as bad as it could have been and not nearly i'm not nearly as pessimistic as i would have been if the warriors had continued to give it to the jazz um for another 24 minutes after that first half finished uh do have to um take a dive into the box score really quick um, for the Jazz and give a huge shout out to Rudy Gobert. Um, not just because he was nine for 10 from the field um, and two of four from the line. And, um, but mainly because he was plus 10 and the only player um, in the positive. Mike Conley was zero. I guess we can debate if that's a positive number, um, but not a negative. But every other player for the Jazz was, um, it was in the negative, especially the bench where you had Rudy Gay at negative 19, Jordan Clarkson at negative 11, um, and then not nearly as bad, Joe Ingles at negative six. But that really comes down to the fact where you see that the Jazz, on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, only played an eight-man rotation. And 
that definitely ended with Rudy Gobert playing more minutes than he typically would, I believe, at 35. And Rudy Gay playing more minutes. I, I'm actually not sure on that. He got 20 minutes. But you're definitely seeing that Whiteside was missed. So overall, yes, I think that the Jazz can hopefully plan on having Whiteside. But especially, you know, after watching the Jazz play the last 20 or so games of last season without Mike Conley and without Donovan Mitchell and watching the Jazz play, you know, the Clippers series without Mike Conley and with a very injured Donovan Mitchell, we have seen that the Jazz can't necessarily bank on having their whole team healthy. So while I do think that obviously there's a lot of luck into winning a title and that's one of the things um, that the Jazz need to hope for, I'd prefer not to hope for that. So hope to see them continue to improve. Now, Donovan Mitchell did do his best tonight. I'll give him that. He played with a lot of heart, but he had a bad night. He was four for 19 from the field um, and two of nine from three. He did get to the line a lot, a lot, and was 10 of 11 from the free throw line. So that's great. And he, he did, he finished with 20 points um, and was doing his best to get the ball to other players. I had not realized that he um, got nine assists. So big props to him um, on a night where he was not playing as well as he could have, that he was still looking for other players and not just trying to get his. So I don't know if any of that is his back is still bothering him. Um, If maybe coming off of a back-to-back, he's not nearly as, it's not nearly as rested. And I hope that his back isn't going to be an issue throughout the rest of the season. That's not anything that I know specifically. We're um, questioning about whether his back impacted his game tonight. Um, Just kind of a thought of mine. So overall, yes, Golden State won this game. Um, Winning this game makes me feel confident that they're the team to beat and that they're the best team in the West. I still think the Jazz have a lot of potential, and I still think if things go their way, that they are going to be able to, um, you know, win the West and possibly win the title. But Golden State after tonight, especially when you're missing Draymond Green and Klay Thompson is coming back this year, they're the best team in the West. But overall, I'm happy to see the resilience of the Jazz and the fact that this game could have went two ways, could have been an absolute blowout, or the Jazz could have came out and put their heart and soul into it and been able to do what they did, which is come back and make me think that at least they had the chance of winning. And while obviously I'd prefer a win, I'm much more happy with this loss than the loss I thought I was going to see at the end of the first half. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, We really appreciate the support. Please leave a like, comment, um, follow wherever you're at. Hope you guys have a great new year. Um, Sorry for not getting a video out last night. Um, Dale and I decided to take that night off, but we'll be getting you a Saturday episode this week and keep bringing you the post games. So thanks again and go jazz.